Semper Fi, everyone. Welcome to the latest installment of Recon Jack. I'm your host, United States Marine Corps veteran and living historian, Chuck Lidge. On today's episode, I'll discuss Franklin Wharton, who was the third commandant of the Marine Corps from 1804 until his death in 1818. He is most importantly remembered as a Marine officer during the Quasi-War with France and the First Barbary War, as well as Marine Commandant during the War of 1812 against the United Kingdom and its allies. On 23 July 1767, Franklin Wharton was born into a prominent Philadelphia, Pennsylvania family. The son of successful American merchant Joseph Wharton, he had forsaken a successful business career to become Lieutenant of the Marines for the frigate United States, which was still part of the War Department. Wharton was quickly promoted to Captain in August 1798 and served as officer in charge of the vessel's Marine Detachment until the close of the Quasi-War with France in 1801. I'll dive deeper into more of the history of this war, but it was basically an undeclared war between the United States and the French First Republic over the issue of French privateers attacking and seizing 316 U.S. merchant ships that were trading with the British in American waters. At age 36 and a Marine officer for only five years, Wharton became Lieutenant Colonel and Marine Corps Commandant on 6 March 1804. He soon became the first Commandant to occupy the Commandant's House Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. Between the years 1801 to 1805, Wharton would also serve as a Marine Officer and later Commandant as the United States fought against four North African states during the First Barbary War. For more information on this war, as well as the small force of U.S. Marines under command of First Lieutenant Presley O'Banion, during the Battle of Derna, please feel free to check out Episode 6 of Recon Jack. As Commandant, Lieutenant Colonel Wharton ordered a detachment of Marines to Georgia and Florida in 1811 to cooperate with U.S. Army troops in an attempt to subdue an uprising. By the year 1812, he had led the Marine Corps into a larger, more professional, and better organized force. Wharton, like Commandants after him, had to fend off attempts by politicians to abolish or severely curtail the Marine Corps. Now, as war approached, he was in command of an undersized force that he knew would have ever-increasing responsibilities. The Marine Corps was to provide all the traditional duties of Marines and, as the war progressed, adapt to the needs of their nation. The traditional duties of providing trained, seaborne, small arms units on board the ships of the U.S. Navy and provide security at the young nation's fledgling Navy yards were expected, but in the war to come, they found themselves as infantry, artillery, public safety, and public administration. One Flummox Marine Corps officer wrote to Commandant Wharton, what other branch of military science the government may next require of the Marines to perform, I am at a loss to conjecture unless it be engineering. In the war with Great Britain and the other events of the years 1812 to 1815, the Marine Corps would face many challenges and they would meet and accomplish all of them. Under Wharton's leadership, Marines participated in many important engagements during the War of 1812. They saw action at Annapolis, Fort McHenry, which is where Francis Scott Key wrote the lyrics for the American National Anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, at Portsmouth, Craney Island, Blandensburg, and New Orleans, and fought under U.S. Army General Henry Dearborn on the northern frontier. At sea, they participated in virtually every important naval battle, serving aboard warships and privateers on the Great Lakes, the Atlantic, and the Pacific. United States Marines fought under U.S. Navy Commodore Oliver Perry on Lake Erie and under Commodore Isaac Chauncey on Lake Ontario. Aboard the frigate USS Constitution, Marines important factors in its victorious battles against four British naval vessels. Those aboard USS Wasp saw action in the vessel's engagements with three British Navy ships. Marines serving aboard the frigate USS United States were commended for the efficiency in its fight with HMS Macedonian. Lieutenant Colonel Commandant Franklin Wharton died in office on 1 September 1818 in New York City 
and was buried in New York's Old Trinity Churchyard. Having honorably served as a Marine officer for 20 years, with 14 and a half years as Commandant, he quickly rose through the ranks by proving his value to the Corps. Wharton may not stand as a most memorable Marine officer or Commandant, but he certainly was an immensely important U.S. military leader during the country's first declared war, plus two other unofficially declared wars, as well as having fought for the continuance of the Marine Corps against many of those who thought it unnecessary. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Recon Jack, and perhaps you learned something new. Stay tuned for more episodes as I continue to explore the hallowed history, traditions, and individuals of the United States Marine Corps. Please, as always, feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell, and leave a comment in the section below. I always enjoy interacting with you folks and seeing the growth of my channel. Also, don't forget to tell a friend or family member, and do not hesitate to send me an email to recon underscore jack at hotmail.com. Until next time, Semper Fi and carry on.